I want to start this video by saying that I'm learning a lot from Gary Wayne and sometimes I might even quote him on certain things. And that's not to say that I think he's a prophet or knows everything, but I do think that he's being prompted by the Holy Spirit to uncover and communicate information during these end times. But I also do my own analysis and recognition of historical and cultural patterns. I am a software analyst by profession and I have an aptitude for that type of thinking. I do verify Gary's references and find some of my own, especially in entertainment and modern culture parallels. And everything that he has said checks out with me so far uh, in my spiritual and in my intellectual. And in this video, I'm going to be summarizing some things in relation to the King of Jerusalem title, which Gary has talked about in his book, The Genesis 6 Conspiracy, and in numerous interviews. So, regarding the um, King of Jerusalem, it ties into occult history. Uh, and occult history mixes truth with lies and a lot of allegory. And another way to describe that would be semi-false narratives with symbolism attached. And also the full absolute truth being hidden. Which in the end it's done to lead people away from the truth of the Most High God and His Son Jesus who died on the cross for us and was resurrected. So in other words, it's truth mixed in with lies and fairy tales, which is of course an attribute of their true God, which is Satan. And we see that all the time in mythology, in Shakespeare, in fantasy books and movies like Lord of the Rings with their Ring Lord and Grail bloodlines, uh, in uh, older literature such as the King Arthur tales with the Holy Grail and Knights of the Round Table and Guinevere, uh, in the Da Vinci Code and uh, Brutus of Troy is even one that we haven't really talked about before from the Da Vinci Code. So when I report about this occult history and the allegories and fairy tales in my videos, it's not to say that I believe these things actually occurred, but to report on the narratives used to conflate an occult history. And I just wanted to make that clear. So we've been talking about the fact that the royal bloodlines down through history trace their genealogy back to Nephilim giants and the divine right to rule. But they also claim their divine right to rule in other ways, and eventually will use all these ways to claim the King of Jerusalem title. And the King of Jerusalem title relates to uh, the royal Nephilim genealogy. It also relates to end time prophecy and the Gnostic end time religion of the dragon, Messiah, which we Christians would call the Antichrist. And their goal is for their dragon messiah to be crowned in the temple of Jerusalem as the king of Jerusalem. And as we said, the Gnostic Essene Christians do a lot of historical narrative conflating with literature, mythology, and allegory. And some examples of these, are, of these groups are the Knights Templar, the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Rex Du, the Rosicrucians, and the Priory of Sion. And the idea of these groups is to devalue Jesus and what he did on the cross. And this is all a form of Gnostic Christianity, which will be used in the end times to be sure. And certainly this concept of Ordo Draconis, or the Order of the Dragon, which is the order of kings on continental Europe who employ the Gnostic religion of the Dragon Messiah. And they're going to try to trace this back to their dragon messiah in a number of ways, and a few that I'm aware of are one, through Nephilim gods of antiquity, uh, two, to Jesus through Mary Magdalene, as in the Da Vinci Code we saw, uh, to King David through King Saul as a Benjamite, and eventually uh, to the King of Jerusalem title. And the King of Jerusalem title was started by the Knights Templar who wanted to reclaim Jerusalem for themselves and take any of the temple treasure that they could. And it started in 1118 in a small priory, which is a monastery, called the Abbey of Notre Dame in France after the Crusaders took Jerusalem. I'm showing that here. 
Uh, but the Knights Templar, they were not knights. They were European aristocrats. Uh, the first ruler of the Kingdom of Jerusalem was Godfrey de Bouillon and then Baldwin I. Both were from the House of Lorraine who take their bloodlines back to the Merovingians. Uh, the Lorraines then married into the Habsburgs and became the Habsburg Lorraine dynasty. And there was actually a dragon court established and coupled along with the Kingdom of Jerusalem title in Europe in the 1400s with the Stuarts and that's the Order of the Dragon. And here it plainly says that the Society of Dragons were a monarchical chivalric order only for selected higher aristocracy and monarchs and that it was fashioned after the military order of the Crusades or the Knights Templar. And by the way, Vlad Dracul, Transylvania, who Prince Charles says he's related to, um, was also inducted into the Order of the Dragon or the Order of Draconis. And his rule was around uh, that same time um, of, in the 1400s. So the Order of the Dragon is tied to the King of, of Jerusalem title and the Knights Templar. And I'll just mention it here that that title is currently held by King Felipe of Spain, who's the son of Juan Carlos of the Bourbon bloodline. And if you remember King Louis, the King Louis were also Bourbons. But Juan Carlos received the title through intermarriage with the Habsburg Lorraine bloodline, which are descended down from and or tied to the Merovingians. So in summary, this King of Jerusalem title is one way to declare their divine right to rule and declare Jerusalem as their inheritance. And another is the genealogy back to Jesus through Mary Magdalene in the Priory of Zion. And both of these were goals of the Knights Templar. Those Knights Templar became the Freemasons of Europe and they are also the ones who funded the Gothic cathedrals in France, Germany, and Spain, etc. And I wanted to focus on this in my video because of the recent success of the Sound of Freedom movie. And a couple of different friends had sent me um, information about this movie having ties and being funded by some not so great organizations. So I looked into it and uh, one of those organizations being the Child Liberation Foundation, which isn't an organization, it's ac actually an investment group traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, they have over 13 billion in assets and 1,200 employees, the founder being Paul Hutchinson. And here it says here that he was knighted by the Knights Templar and knighted also by the Order of San Martino by Prince Lorenzo in Rome. He has honorary doctorates from over 10 university, universities, including Harvard. So I wanted to point this out because this is what we in the uh, truther community would call the light world order or white witch trickery. And these are exactly the types of things that I think are most important to understand going forward. Thank you.